with his mother. Now, I, I, I don't mean to talk bad about relationships, but, you know, it finally took 30 years in the guts to make a decision to finally find happiness. And, I, and I'm just so thrilled with being able to take that step and be able to see something, hopefully out in the future, that you know is better, and finally taking the guts to do it. Uh, we sit most of the time in our lives, and the opportunities are there, but we're afraid to take that step. I was afraid for 30 years to take that step. And finally, uh, you know, finally, finally just, just had the guts and the fortitude to, to, to do it. And we can sit here and we can think, you know, my life's good, or, or, or I, I can settle for, for the way it is right now when the opportunity is right in front of us. And if we just, if we just took that step, uh, six years ago, I was a distributor in a network marketing company. I didn't, I gotta be honest with you, I didn't believe in network marketing. All I thought is the guys at the top made all the money. That's what I really thought. And for years, come on, I'm from Salt Lake City, Utah. <laughs> that is the network marketing capital of the world. You name, you name out of 500 network marketing companies you can name, 400 of them come out of, Salt, out of Utah. So I'm in the Mecca where it all happens. Uh, and so I've been bombarded all my life with net network marketing companies, from the Amway days to, to all the way through to, you know, the ones that started last week in, in, in Utah. Uh, and I finally, after all those many, many years, decided, you know, I'm going to give it a try, because I've been bad-mouthing it for years. And so finally, I, I took that step. And I, I, I'm not here to brag. Some know this story, but my first paycheck in the very first month in network marketing was $22,000. And I went, holy crap, there is something to this industry that I never knew. And I was at the top. I was the guy that started at the very, very bottom and realized the guys at the bottom can make just as much money as the guys at the top if they take that step and make the effort. And my partner and I, Kurt Entz, kind of were kind of doing this business together, this network marketing business together. And we were driving down the road one day. It was about six years ago. Gas prices had just hit over four dollars a gallon in Salt Lake City. It was over five bucks a gallon in in the, in California. Uh, and that's not to mention what it was around the world. You know, it's still today. You know how much gasoline is over in the UK? It's twelve bucks a gallon. Over all throughout the world, I mean, it's cheap here. I don't know why we're complaining because basic gas is cheaper in the U.S. than anywhere else in the world. All throughout Europe, it averages between 10 and 12 uh, dollars a gallon. And, uh, and he was on the radio, listening to the radio, and, and every moment they were talking about the price of fuel. And uh, I knew my partner, this Kurt Entz, because he'd been a friend for many, many years, had a fuel additive that he sold commercially. I can remember sitting in his office one day. We were waiting to go do something together, something with this other network marketing company, waiting for him to finish up his regular business stuff. And, and the fax, I was sitting right next to the fax machine, and, and it kicked on. I looked over, and the fax machine spit out this PO. And I picked and looked at it, and it was a PO for like, I can't remember, it was like $350,000 PO. And I went, and are you kidding me? And I turned to him and I said, this is a PO? I said, how much money do you make off of that? He told me how much money he made, and I went, you mean that's all you got to do is have one order once a year, and you're set? And uh, I said, well, what's this for? And he says, well, it's for this fuel additive stuff that I sell. I said, what are you talking about? What fuel additive? He said, you know the stuff I gave you about a year or so ago? I said, no, what are you talking about? He says, yeah, I gave you a bottle of the stuff. About, he actually says about two years ago. To be honest with you, I went home after that, and I found it sitting in my garage. I never used it. It was that. It was. It was about half full. It was a that size bottle. It had been sitting on a shelf, and I, you know, he gave it to me. And I went, oh yeah, yeah, put it on a shelf. He said that product, and told me what it did, uh, what it did, and months later, we're, like I say, we're driving the freeway. I know. I started using this product right then. By the way. And knew what he'd done, and he'd been using it for about five, six months, and 
and uh, knew the, the savings I was, I was getting from it. So I turned to him and I said, here we were being very successful in a network marketing company. I turned and I said, you know what, we're stupid. We ought to, we ought to start our own and use, and use your fuel additive. And he goes, nah, nah, <laughs> he didn't want to bother with it. And I bugged him for about, four, about two or three months, I bugged him about starting this business. And finally one day I got mad at him, like friends do. I got, I got really mad and I said, then screw you. I'm going to start it on my own, and can I buy the product from you? And uh, he turned to me and went, all right, all right, all right. And that's how this thing really got started. Uh, with the idea that, that one person can make a decision, and it can really affect the lives of, right now, hundreds of thousands of people. Um, and we took a product, an age-old product, that's been around for many, many years, that had been used very successfully in the commercial industry for many, many years, and for the first time, we put that product in the hands of consumers. Now, back then, of course, uh, he had he did have this size bottle. That's all he had. You, you could either buy it in this size bottle, or you could buy it in a drum. And of course, we figured out how to put it into smaller containers and individual doses so that we could get it into the hands of consumers. And uh, this company was born, and, and it's been expanding throughout the world ever since. But it's all because of a decision that was made to jump forward and just give it an effort. You know, this company got started because of, of the decision of one. I'm happy today because I finally got my guts enough to move forward in my life and find happiness for myself. Uh, and we sit here today in this room with the exact same opportunity. There are, there are those of you in this room right now that, that uh, you know, happiness comes in a lot of different forms. And it may be that uh, a two or three hundred dollars a month would really change your life. Would allow you to maybe go out to eat a little bit more often with your spouse, or do something a little bit more often with your kids. Take them, take them to some, some event or something that in the past you just, you just wouldn't do. For some people, a few hundred dollars is really life changing for them. For other people like Chris Bailey, tens of thousands of dollars a month difference is, is life changing. But it's all based on what you want to do today. Um, we as a company have a vision that even our leaders don't know about. See, our job as, as corporate is to provide an opportunity to make sure that we have product that will sell and ship correctly, that, that uh, when it comes time to pay commissions, that we pay on time, every time, that, that we're, we never ever miss. And of course, you guys know we've never missed a dime of commission from the day, from the day we started. We're a debt-free company. Our job is to, is to provide the opportunity, but not just an opportunity of just selling fuel additive. Our vision is, is much bigger than that. And uh, you'll see over the next year that Syntec, the name Syntec, will just be one of our divisions as we expand into other markets and other arenas with different products provide opportunities for not just those who love the fuel industry, but all kinds of different in industries, as, as uh, we'll be announcing here uh, soon. Nobody knows this. <laughs> not even corporate staff. The new name of our company, of our umbrella company, as we expand and Syntec becomes a division of, 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 uh, of our new company. So, there's, there's much more to us than just a company that sells fuel additive right now. Although we've been very, very successful worldwide in doing that. Uh, yes, we are successful overseas, very successful in Africa. You know why we're so successful in Africa? Because the fuel is so bad there. You think, our, you, think you get good, good gas mileage here? You ain't seen nothing until you go to those kind of countries where our... Are, uh, it's very common to get 30 and 40 percent 
increase in fuel mileage because their fuel is just so poor. Anyway, let's go back to making that decision. Uh, a lot of people who get involved get involved with this idea that if I join and get a couple people under me, I'm set. And I can kick back and watch it just explode. Can it happen? Yes, it can. It can happen that way, and I've seen it happen over and over again. I've seen people who come into this business happen to get a sign of a couple of amazing people and then kick back and watch it explode and get their huge paychecks. Yes, it can happen. Does it happen that way with most people? No, it doesn't. It, it, it does take work. And a lot of people get involved thinking, if I get involved, I'm going to sign up a few people, and within a matter of months, I'm going to make them $10,000, $20,000 a month. Uh, for most of us who get involved in this industry, uh, yeah, it, 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 does take, it does take some effort. But what I found, and there's people in this room that will verify that, that it's not so much who you talk to, it's, that, it's just that you just keep talking. So many people in this industry jump into this, this, and they give it a try for three or four months, and they go, well, I'm not making my huge paychecks right now, and they quit. And if that same person would have stuck with it for a couple years, three, four, five years, they'd be sitting in Chris Beatty's position today because he had the patience to be able to watch this thing grow and happen over time. Uh, <clears throat> All of our leaders, every one of our leaders will, will tell you the same story, that uh, it, it, takes, it takes time. It takes time. And if you just hang with it and you just keep at it and keep plugging along and keep talking to people, that everyone in this room can have the same exact opportunity to be in a place like Chris Bailey is today, to be uh, debt-free and, and, and living his dream. I know the kind of paychecks he makes, because I see him. He makes a hell of a lot more money than I do. <laughs> he really does. And, uh, and, and I knew that going in. I knew that distributors would have success, and I knew they'd make a lot more money than I ever would. But it's the dream that I had that I could take a product, start an industry, that it, it could affect tens of thousands of people. Um, I, uh, I had a dream a long, long time ago, and I visualized that dream, and uh, I hoped it would happen. I really did. Uh, but now I'm actually seeing the fruits of those dreams because I actually see it and experience it happening throughout the world, and it's, it's been a blessing in my life to make friends with, with the dear people here I've been this is, this is my second or third time. I think it's my second time. Second, second time here to Vermont. And uh, uh, ate every bit of the maple syrup I was given when I <laughs> got home, so I'm out of it. Don't have any more. But again, it, it, bo it, it boils down to that, to that individual decision. You know, to take that jump. You might have heard a lot. Maybe people might have heard that the story before, but I just maybe it, it, it's good to tell it again because it falls in line with what I'm trying to convey today. Uh, there was an old hermit that lived in a, in a community, and uh, actually he lived on a on a hillside in this village. These townspeople lived below, and he lived up on this hillside. And he lived all by himself and uh, didn't talk to anybody, didn't speak to anybody. Like, he was a hermit. He kind of lived up there alone. But he was a very, very, very wise old man. And every year, it was a tradition in this village that the townspeople have the opportunity to climb up the mountainside and ask this old man anything they wanted to. And he would always have the answer for them because he was so wise. And every year this happened, it, it was a tradition. And, and it came to the point where it was going to happen again at this yearly event. And there was a young man in the town, 14 years old, that thought, you know, if I can fool this old man, 